The day is upon us. Berlin has arrived. Juventus versus Barcelona. How will the Italians face up against the almost impossibly good Barcelona? Where we're going to talk about how they can shape up here on our special Champions League final, Let's Talk Tactics. Juventus are a solid team and they've surpassed a lot of people's expectations so far this year. Can they pull off the impossible? And I say that with all confidence because it is pretty impossible to beat this Barcelona team at the moment. But if there's one team in the Champions League that I would have said even two or three rounds back that would cause them a problem, it was Juventus. I said that they would cause an issue to Real Madrid. They did. And now I think they can definitely cause a problem to Barcelona if they stick to what works for them. So let's take a quick look at their formation in their last Champions League encounter against Real Madrid. So they went with this 4-3-1-2 style formation and it's almost impossible to predict in this Juventus team who's going to be the attacking midfielder and who's going to sit in the midfield because they're so flexible in there. So their back four, I imagine, will stay the exact same. Lake Steiner at right back, who's pretty solid. Benucci, Chiellini, those two solid Italian centre-backs. Evra, who's been somewhat rejuvenated this year in his left-back role. He'll have an extra bit between his teeth and I'm sure Chiellini will hope to not have Suarez's bit between his shoulders, but I'm sure they'll still continue to play to the best of their ability despite their frustrations towards the Uruguayan. They'll be in their back four, and it's the midfield that we're talking about. This Juventus team has shown so much heart, and it is the middle of the team. It is the heartbeat that makes Juventus the team they are this year because it's Marquisio, it is Vidal, it is Pirlo, and it is Pogba who's going to win this game for Juventus if they can play well and to the best of their ability. Never mind Tevez at this moment in time. He is fantastic. He will be essential. But I'm going to focus on the midfield, especially for this moment in time. So let's take a quick look here and how I imagine both teams will line up. Of course, Juventus in the black. In their midfield, it's very hard to, to kind of put down tactically because it's, it's, it's a staggered midfield. So you're, you're always going to have Pirlo here. Because what he does, I've talked about before, the crab. And Jason loves it, particularly when I talk about it. He plays like a crab. He moves side to side. He will ping the odd pass in behind and move up to this area. But he's always an outlet for his defenders. But what is essential for Juventus in this game is to cut out the through passes to Lionel Messi. Because we know that Messi picks up in those pockets. So they have to continue that staggered midfield. And what I mean with the staggered midfield is this right here. So Marquisio will sit right here. Vidal or Pogba will sit right here. Whoever's interchangeable and another person will sit up here and attack to, to try and close down Biscuits if he gets the ball. And what I mean with the stagger midfield is you see it, it's like a zigzag. It's almost like each player is two or three yards in front of each other to, maybe, to be able to cut out this area. So Marquisio can cut out that area, Vidal can cut out this area and Pirlo is there to protect his back four. And it will stop passes going through so easily because you know that Barcelona are going to find the gaps. It's, it's almost impossible, I keep using that word impossible because it is almost impossible to stop them but you can minimise how much space they get and they need to have that staggered midfield. They need someone uh, whether it's Pogba or Vidal who holds a point in midfield to close down Biscuits because he's the man who's going to pick up the ball a lot. And Tevez will have to do his job. Morata will be the last man. He will sit right on the defenders, but Tevez will have to work his ass off to cover this area because you know that Barcelona like to get it into the back and play that simple diagonal pass out wide to Alba into Busquets' feet and then he'll try and find the ball to Neymar or into Iniesta. And it's, it's really hard to do this, but Bayern Munich at times done it well when they started pressing higher up the field. Juventus, as soon as they scored against Real Madrid, were brilliant at doing this. They were, they were covering all the right spaces. And it's that midfield, I'm telling you, that th this game will be won and lost. It's whether they can stop those passes going into Lionel Messi and it's whether they can minimise the amount of touches he gets on the ball before they can close him down in, in that space. So they need to stick to the staggered midfield. That's how they're going to shut down Barcelona defensively. Let's talk about what they can do going forward. So I mentioned it briefly there. The fact that Biscuits is going to be a, an essential player for Barcelona, as we know. But when Juventus did this specifically against Real Madrid, they had a lot of success. It's when they utilised that man, Carlos Tevez. So if you look here, the goal that happened against Real Madrid in the first leg is Tevez picked the ball up in this area. And it creates this confusion whether the, the defender steps in and picks him up or whether the hold midfielder drops back. Because the hold midfielder has to worry about, especially in this game, the likes of Paul Pogba, who likes to make those last-minute runs into the box, but Tevez is very good at confusing the midfield, so he needs to be picking up the ball similar to what Messi does, his Argentinian teammate. He needs to pick the ball up in this hole in here and force Mascherano to come out and maybe create this gap in here where Morata can make that run, because what happened against Real Madrid is the centre-backs, of course Barcelona are a lot more structured than Real Madrid, don't get mistaken there, but if Tevez steps in there, 
what this will happen is this will create this space in here. Because Jordi Alba, if he presses to the ball of someone like, uh, say, Vidal picks it in here, if Tevez makes that run into this gap, as he did against Real Madrid, it creates a lot of confusion in the back because Tevez is so unpredictable to play against. If you get too close, he can turn you in an instant. If you give him too much space, like Real Madrid did, he has a shot, it's on frame, bounces out, and Morata is a, is a poacher. He's a poacher. He'll pick up everything in the box, and that is where Juventus need to make sure they exploit. Split... I say it a lot in tactics, and I'm going to continue to say it because it's what happens. If you can split the structure between a defensive midfielder and the, the centre-back, especially with Mascherano and Busquets, who are both in the same frame of mind, because Mascherano, on paper, is a defensive midfielder, but I think he's very good at centre-back. But if you get him confused, he may leave a few gaps there that Juventus can go in and exploit. That's the main area of weakness I think they need to exploit for Barcelona, because at this point in the season, Barcelona can literally do no wrong. So Juventus have to go outside of their comfort zone, Maybe take some risk to get an early lead, but I know that if Juventus get an early goal in this game, it could definitely be a problem for Barcelona. So they need to make sure staggered midfield, exploit uh, the gap in between the, the centre-back and the centre-defensive midfielder, and it'll be one hell of a game. Make sure to stay tuned to TYT Sports. Of course, we will be bringing you a recap after the game. Who do you think is going to win it? Barcelona or Juventus? Is my tactics on point? Let me know in the comment section below. Tweet me throughout the game at Francis underscore Maxwell. I'll be live tweeting from the moment of kickoff to the moment that trophy is raised. Thanks again, guys.